This is the Unfresh List 2017. I read probably like 400, 500 scripts each year from amateurs, from professionals, and there's certain story ideas that I see again and again and again, and you need to be aware of those, that they are not necessarily so fresh. And if you are not in LA and you're not familiar with that term, we throw that around a lot in the industry. Oh, I thought that was fresh. I didn't think that was fresh. Oh, that was really fresh. And that just means something new and different that we haven't seen before. So I'm going to do a countdown of the top 13 unfresh story ideas. Number 13 is the band gets back together. This could either be a band that was really hot and they were at the top of the charts or it's a group of people who were in a band in high school getting the band back together again. I would actually put this like in the top five a couple years ago. There aren't as many of them now, but there's still a lot of band getting back together again stories. Number 12 is God, Jesus, angels, and demons as characters. So we have scenes in heaven, we have scenes in hell, or we have scenes all on the earth, but Jesus is on the earth, or God comes to the earth, or Satan comes to the earth, or angels are on the earth. You get the idea. Number 11 is interesting. I call it mom on strike. I think there are a lot of really unhappy housewives out there. And so these screenplays are about women feeling dissatisfied with their lives. They spend their whole day just cleaning up after other people and doing laundry and packing lunches. And they decide, forget it, I'm out of here. And they take off and they leave their family and they go on some other adventure. Number 10 is a detective chasing a serial killer. Now with these stories, I'm not saying don't write these or you can't write these, but just be aware that a lot of other people are writing these and you really need to make sure you've got some really unique, interesting, different idea that can kind of make these well-worn story ideas fresh. Number nine is the road trip. Everybody wants to just go get in the car and tour around and look at things. A lot of them are kind of the pointless road trip. Every once in a while they have some destination they're specifically going to, but there's a whole lot of road trip. Number eight's interesting. I'm seeing a lot of this lately and it is the suicidal character. They're trying to commit suicide or they're suicidal throughout or they build up to trying to commit suicide. Number seven is vampires and zombies. I bet you thought this would be higher. No, people have kind of calmed down on the vampires and the zombies. They realize everybody was writing zombie and vampire stories. Now, the funny thing about the latest vampire and zombie stories is they are about zombies and vampires, but then they just call them something else. And like, that's going to fool us. Like just because they don't say it's a vampire, we will think that it's not a vampire, even though the vampires, if they go in the sun, they get their skin burned and you have to kill them with a steak and they suck blood. They call these things something else as if we really won't realize they're really just vampires and zombies. Number six is home for a blank. This is home for a holiday, home for a wedding, home for a funeral. And the characters just kind of hang out in their hometown and usually they're dissatisfied with their lives. So they start to like look at pictures of themselves when they were younger in their old room. And they usually start a romance with whoever they used to be involved with years ago. Number five is an old person interacting with a young person. Could even be combined with a road trip. The old person has to go on a road trip with the young person. And again, I'm not saying don't write these or that no one should write these. I'm just saying I get a lot of these stories and more often than not, the gist of the whole story is just, oh, look how cranky they are. Oh, they always use a smartphone. And there's not much story besides that, them just kind of like getting on each other's nerves. Number four is demon possession movies. Oh, those nasty little demons just love to possess people. Number three is the haunted house or the cabin in the woods. These tend to be kind of typical. Somebody moves into a new house. Oh no, what's that noise? And then they find out there's some spirit that's all mad about something that happened in the past. Or it's a group of young people that go out to a cabin in the woods just to hang out. Maybe it's spring break, maybe it's summer. And oh no, somebody's trying to kill them. Yeah, we've kind of seen that before. Number two is bucket list movies. 
so many bucket list movies, which is interesting because that movie came out so long ago. Number one, can you guess what it is? It's cancer. Everybody's dying of cancer. There's so many scripts I'll read and they'll be really interesting. And then boom, I get the scene. Oh, they're at the doctor's office. Uh oh, oh, I know it's coming. And then they say, oh, it's stage four. Oh, who, who could have guessed it would have been stage four cancer. And then that's sometimes usually combined with a bucket list and then an old person and a young person go on a road trip and sometimes home for a something. So there's a lot of cancer out there. I'm serious. I would say like 5% of the scripts I'm reading, somebody has cancer. So that is the list. That's what I'm seeing out there. And that's just to make you aware of the terrain. That does not mean you should not write these stories. Doesn't mean you can't write these stories. Just be aware. You've got to really have a fresh, interesting take on these stories to make your work stand out. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I will talk to you later. Bye.